Hi again, it's Sarah. Mary and Margaret. My colleague Mary Margaret. Hello. And we're here to follow up on our last vlog, which talked about some um, common misperceptions or misconceptions about emotional support. And now we're going to talk about some common misperceptions in the domain of classroom organization. Yep. So classroom organization is really about time and mm -hmm. how much time you can pack into a day. Mm -hmm. So we've got, we're connected with the children, which is great. So now we need to make use of that connection mm -hmm. and at that time. And so this is really about um, how the teacher manages behavior, time, and attention. Mm -hmm. So um, we're, I guess you're essentially looking for how much time is wasted. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you don't mm -hmm. want to waste time, right? right? So right. we have um, our three dimensions um, behavior management, productivity, and instructional learning formats. And so just kind of a quick overview is like, is there time wasted because the children don't know how to behave or the teacher's spending a lot of time managing their behavior right. or that they don't have something to do if so there's a right. lot of waiting or mm -hmm. um, you know, the preparation is not really there. Mm -hmm. Or instructional learning formats, if they don't know how to focus their attention. They might right. be engaged with something, but we know that um, engagement with teacher um, intentionality and, and getting their interest um, peaked, taking it and stretching mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, interest is what really focuses their learning. Right, right. So okay. you can do behavior management. Okay, I will talk about behavior management and what I'm going to focus on is the footnote at the bottom of page 44 in the pre-k manual which says at the high end of behavior management evidence of some teacher behaviors such as proactive strategies and effective redirection may not be evident because behavior is so well managed. If there's no evidence of student misbehavior, it's assumed that effective behavioral strategies are in place and the classroom may score in the high range. So I think that what the footnote says is very clear, but how people have interpreted it right. is sometimes not clear. So it's not unusual for people to overcode uh, the behavior management dimension because the children were very well behaved. And that's wonderful. We want to see well behaved children, but we also have to recognize that all four indicators are weighted equally. Mm -hmm. And so if we see that the children are well behaved, yet the teacher isn't monitoring, that's a little bit of a problem. Or the children we believe are well behaved based on our definition of well behaved, but then we notice the teacher who is frequently commenting on the on the children redirecting um, redirecting the children sit on your bottom don't move um, are you paying attention those kinds of of reacting to behavior clues us into the fact that actually the teacher doesn't consider the t children to be well behaved and if we have a teacher who is doing a lot of that kind of redirection is reactive then the teacher is actually losing instructional time yeah. because she's busy managing behavior, which again, we may think is perfectly good behavior, but she doesn't. So we right. have to always keep that in, not, in mind when we're looking at that footnote. Right, and when, so if a, if a teacher is doing redirects, and it's great if they're positive and phrased positively, we'd certainly like to see that, but it's still taking time away. And what that tells us is that the children don't completely understand the right. expectations. Um, even if the teacher says, okay, everybody's going to go put away their, their books and go back over to the carpet, that's a clear behavioral expectation. But if the kids get their books and run over to the dramatic play area, then it shows that they didn't really understand. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an important part about behavior management. It's not up to us to decide if the children are behaving well. Mm -hmm. We're trying to see if the teacher's spending time getting the children to behave, managing mm -hmm. their behavior. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that All makes right. us on to productivity. Okay. Um, and this one's a tough one um, for people sometimes. What did you it say? Is. Cognitive dissonance? <laughs> yes. Um, so a lot of people have cognitive dissonance because, again, that it's that footnote. Productivity ratings should not consider the quality of instruction or student engagement, which are considered in other, um, other dimensions. And so often when I'm introducing this dimension, I just pause and say, okay, Cognitive dissonance, How do you? what do you feel about that? How do you think about it? And people have a hard time with yeah. that. And uh, So it's just like, do they have the opportunity right. for something to do? They, it, right. And what they have to do may not even be what we consider a worthwhile opportunity. Right. And people do get mixed up with maximizing learning time, and they get kind of stuck mm. on the word learning. Mm -hmm. um, and yes. What was it that you said? Planning, right? Planned. So right. planned activities, planned learning activities. I think is one way to help people move beyond right. this idea that the productivity 
should consider the quality. Um, but helping people understand that and also thinking that, yes, we're going to pick up this is a terrible rote cookie cutter activity, um, and we're going to pick up on that when we talk about instructional learning formats. Right, or regard. Or regard. Or sensitivity. Yes, <laughs> right. in many ways we'll pick up on right. it, yeah. So don't worry about the, yes, we want them to have learning opportunities within, but maximizing the time that they have mm -hmm. to be able to learn is what mm -hmm. we're really looking at. And the mm -hmm. other place that um, folks get a little bit mixed up on is routines, right. and how are routines different than clear behavioral expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to talk about that? I would. Okay, so one of the ways to think about it is that in routines we're really looking at whether or not the children know what to do around those planned activities. So when you're done um, writing in your journal, you're doing a little journaling, then put your crayons away and go over to the rug and pick up a book and sit down and look at it um, until everybody's ready. Right. So what That's to do next. What to do yeah. next. And it's and, and it's really what to do related to the activity at hand. Whereas behavior management is really about understanding the rules and expectations for behavior. So inside voices, walking feet, um, it, things along that right. line. Right. Sort of about their action. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Oh, and then there's transitions. Sometimes you don't see a transition, um, so you may not consider that. Mm -hmm. But often transitions can be transitions that you don't think of typically as a transition. So mm -hmm. it might be from story to a song to a movement mm -hmm. activity mm -hmm. back to a, a calendar or something like that. Right. So and the those children are all, don't right, is actually it, physically move. Right. But is there are there any waiting times in that? Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. so we really look at that in terms of productivity and right. time again. And we also need to make sure that people understand that we're looking at individual child transitions as well as those whole exactly. group transitions when yeah. we're thinking about that um, indicator. Right. And now right. we're going to talk about our last indicator, I'm sorry, our dimension for um, classroom right. organization, and that is instructional learning formats. And mm -hmm. I'm going to let Sarah sort of give an overview of where she thinks we run into misperceptions. I think um, the, the place... I see it most is actually two places, variety of modalities and material, and some are on clarity of learning objectives. Yeah, that's a tough one. But let's talk about variety of modalities and materials first, because um, it's not about really the materials, we're looking at those interactions, and what it's really about, really when we think about modalities and materials, it's about what the teacher's doing with those materials. You can walk into a classroom and they have uh, all the bells and whistles, every, just the most wonderful material, but if the teacher's not using those materials in a way yeah. to engage the children, then it really doesn't matter. Similarly, we can have the teacher pick up a book, read to the children. The only thing she has is that book, so it's just a book, but the way she's modulating her Facilitating voice, it. pausing, mm. encouraging the children to share what they know, um, which would be modalities, which right? Is modalities. They're looking at the book, they're listening to the book, and they're hearing exactly. about it and talking about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, that, so it can a teacher can um, the classroom can score at that well, high and range. And it makes them active participants. Yes, and, and that's something else. Like, are the children interested? Because if the teacher's really facilitating with whatever the modalities are. Mm -hmm. Getting them engaged so that yep. they are really, it's that hook so that when they're engaged, that's when um, those higher order thinking conversations can really happen. Right. right. Which and is a segue. Which I'm is sure a segue. Um, <laughs> oh, clarity. The clarity yeah. of learning objectives. And uh, and please chime in wherever you'd okay. like, Mary Margaret. It's a tough one. People struggle with this. It is a hard one um, because depending on when we start our observation, we may not see an advanced organizer. And the advanced organizers that we may see may be. A, not these great Venn diagrams that we may see in an elementary classroom, but can be as basic as we have a field trip to the pumpkin patch next week, so we're going to read a book about a farm and use that as a springboard for thinking about the kinds of things we may see at the right. pumpkin patch. All right, But we may not see that. We also may not see a summary because we don't see the end of the activity. And sometimes the teachers don't need to reorient. So what do we do then? So I'm wondering, like, this is about helping children focus or engage. And mm -hmm. so I'm looking at them, and are they engaged with a purpose? Like, mm -hmm. do they know what they're doing and why mm -hmm. and what the point of it is? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't ask a child that, but I ask myself that. If I said, you know, Sarah, what are you doing? And you say, I'm coloring um, a picture um, of flowers. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? I don't know. 
or I'm doing that because Mother Day is coming and I want to make my mom a present, right? Mm -hmm. So that would say I'm focusing my attention and I know what the point mm -hmm. of it is. And then exactly. we're going to go out and plant flowers later. Mm -hmm. Then they would have a very clear um, understanding of what they were doing and why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I would build on that is yeah. you were just saying, you as my teacher are asking me questions. And that's one of the other things mm -hmm. we look for is um, is the teacher uh, keeping her questioning targeted on the learning objective? Exactly. So that facilitation you just did is doing exactly that. So which would be effective question. Which is effective right. questioning, yeah. right. And yeah. so those are some of the things we would want to look at as we're uh, thinking about clarity of learning objectives right. in the preschool classroom. So what's classroom. that format for learning? Mm -hmm. And how is that teacher using her instruction to mm -hmm. get the children there? Mm -hmm. So I think that's it for this yes. time. Um, we'll be back talking about instructional support. Um, on our next vlog. We hope you enjoyed it and that you will share us and like us. All right. Bye-bye. I was going to make us do a dance She was going to have us dance break. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to count 10 seconds before the end of the video. And she didn't do it. <laughs>